Okay, so spring is coming, which means our family will be doing a lot, a lot more science. We usually keep science for the warmer seasons because they're small children. I don't have a need to get into crazy science. So what we do is we do a lot of natural sciences, environmental science, some biology, things like that right outside. So today I'm going to talk about the three resources that I use most for this specifically. So when Gina B asked me to do a collab regarding resources for spring learning, I figured this was a great time to share those resources with you guys. So there will be plenty of other moms in this collaboration to share other spring resources with you on various topics and what they like to do. So make sure you check out the playlist for those videos at the end of this video or linked down below in the Dropbox after you watch mine. So if you're new from one of their channels, hello, welcome. Introduce yourself in the comments. I'd love to get to know you. Tell me a little bit about your spring plans and how you plan to incorporate whatever you're doing this spring. Now regarding what we do specifically, like I said, I have a now seven and four year old, okay? Their birthday's just passed and we're still really young, so there's no need to do anything crazy. So what we do is we use outside as our resource and there's three main places that we go. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you those three places that we go that are more than enough for resources. You don't even actually need curriculum or books technically. Those things can add on and enrich this type of learning, but I'm telling you, this will be like minimal resources need out, needed outside of these places. We do use books and things, and that'll be in another video when I have that rounded up. But for now, let's talk about these three places we go that are considered our most valuable assets as far as resources go. All right, number one, the obvious one, our own backyard, right? Front yard, backyard. We garden. This will be year three for us for gardening, and it is offers so much learning okay now i mostly dabble in food growing food uh but we're starting to dabble in flowers i i honestly feel like flowers are harder to grow than food but yes we grow a garden it's a quite nicely sized garden for city life we do we live in the city so um i have some garden beds in our backyard we have some things growing in columns vertically and we have potted things that grow as well and just to give you an idea of the variety of things that we grow that my kids are learning about we grow zucchinis and other squash squashes, watermelon, both small and larger varieties. That takes up a lot of space in the yard, just so you know. Blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, grapes, peas, okra, green beans, cucumbers, peppers, elderberries. I mean, we grow a lot of stuff. Like I said, considering it's, oh, and a lot of herbs, carrots. Okay, I'll stop there because like I said, considering I, I live in the city, it's a lot. We really make the best of our space. There's still plenty of space for the kids to play, but we really go crazy with the gardening. And nothing teaches you about plant life more than doing it yourself, right? Firsthand learning. Now, not only do I grow plants, but the girls pick varieties of things they would like to grow, and they are specifically responsible for those solely. Of course, I help because they don't, you know, they're little, they don't understand everything, um, but they are very responsible for those plants and then they help me as well with my plants like last year vivi's idea was that's my seven-year-old her idea was to grow watermelon and then my three now four-year-old uh she chose to grow peanuts and that one was interesting so how do my kids help with this the girls help me with a lot so even starting as early as prepping the garden right so we're going to I, I use raised beds so that we don't disrupt the microbiomes of our natural dirt that's another lesson in itself and we you know, we get the soil ready with the fertilizers, things like that. We try to keep it as natural as possible. I love for them to learn about organic growing. They help me plant the seeds and uh, take care of them as they grow, right? They help me with making sure the stems don't break and supporting them properly, making sure they're getting proper watering done. They learn a lot. We learn about the pests and the helpful uh, bugs that are in our garden, right? They know how to identify the ones that are going to hurt our garden versus help our garden. Um, they learn about how to naturally remove pests without getting a lot of chemicals involved. There's a lot of learning about how to sustain yourself, which is so important, right? We live in a world where we don't know what's coming next. So this is a great way to teach your kids how to take care of themselves with food and how to grow it themselves just in case for any reason there comes a day that this is a necessary thing to need. So that's enough doomsday stuff, of course, <laughs> but you just never know. Um, so yes, they do a lot of firsthand learning about plants and bugs 
in our own backyard with our garden. Okay, so that I don't keep rambling, on to the next one. The next big one that we use is conservatories, okay? So conservatories are really cool. Um, this is probably the most expensive of the three, obviously, because most, most conservatories cost a price to get in. I say take advantage of memberships, honestly. So a membership could pay for itself within two to three visits usually to a conservatory. So I recommend getting yourself a membership to save the most money. And so we go regularly and we have amazing conservatory options here locally, especially one that my girls love. And it's great because we can learn about plant life of thing of plants that we don't see every day right this place is known for growing these botanical and desert type plants that we would never see on an everyday basis so it's a great place to get your hands or not hands because you can't really touch the plants but just to like get a sense of all these really cool exotic plants that you don't see every day in your own environment because they don't grow specifically to your climate not only are your kids getting exposure to these plant life situations that they wouldn't see every day. Usually these conservatories hold different events or classes, things like that. Our conservatory has done something really cool, okay? If you don't know, we live in the same city as uh, on Instagram. Her name is The Black Forager. I think her first name is Nicole. Um, but The Black Forager lives here and they do classes with our local conservatory. And that is an amazing opportunity. They have other classes as well, but I'm just really mind blown that she works with them. And so we're looking into doing some classes with her if she's offering them this year. And she's an amazing resource, by the way. She's on Instagram. I will leave her handle down below for you guys. She is an amazing go-to for learning about foraging, which we will talk about soon. And that's why I'm wanting to get any chance I can to maybe do a class with her because forging is going to be huge this year, which we'll talk about in the third resource. But yeah, and they also hold summer camps. You can put your kids into these summer camps where they'll be gone for a few hours a day and they will basically be exploring environmental and natural sciences with kids their own age or in their age range, I guess. Um, so yes, look into your conservatories, look for the classes they hold, look for the um, camps they might have or other resources they could have. Also just you know, looking around, you're gonna learn so much at conservatories. And lastly, the, the, yeah, here, here where we live, it's probably the most resourceful way to learn. Um, other than, like I said, learning in your own backyard is plenty and that you could do any combination of these three. You could do one of them or all three of them, doesn't matter. The last one is using your local Metro parks in their nature centers. Okay, so before we even get into the parks themselves, right, the outside, let's talk about the nature centers. Now, I can't speak for where you live, but the ones around us are amazing. Our state has really put work into making amazing nature centers at our local state parks. When you go into our nature centers, most of the time when you walk in, they've already created some kind of environment to show you something that happens naturally. And there was one that we went to where the entire middle of the nature center was literally a, basically a stream. They recreated the stream that is nearby in the park so that you could see the natural life happening under the water but in an artificial environment to show you the same effect, if that makes sense. So it's glass and you can see everything and it's amazing, but it just replicates what you would have found out in nature that's harder to see when you're above the surface. We can walk in and find um, the skins of all the wildlife that live local to us, which is amazing. Some of our nature centers have these set up stations where you can see um, Native American tools that were used before colonization. And uh, they explain and teach you to you every single one of those tools and how they were used. There's just so many things just inside the nature center alone and beyond it replicating things that you could learn. They also usually have like these classroom settings with games and puzzles and all the books related to whatever you need to learn about your local natural life. So those nature centers are amazing. We even had one that does, um, has like binoculars built in and you can look out into the wildlife over this like, I guess it's a pond, it's a very large one. And without scaring the animals off through these binoculars in this like hidden cubby basically, you can see everything going on firsthand. Bee farms are another thing that are amazing on our state park lands. They have bee farms. I'm afraid of them, but they're there. <laughs> so there's plenty of things. Now, beyond that, here's what's cool beyond that. If you go into your nature centers, they usually have a ton of brochures and booklets to give you even more resources to go out and see. 
right? So my, a close friend of mine recently went to one of our parks and she found like 10 booklets that are amazing and perfect for what we're doing. And she'll be doing a lot of the learning along with us. So it's awesome because she found these booklets where they're free at the nature centers at our local parks. And it tells you all about the different categories of wildlife where we live and where to find them. So one book might be on our spiders that live here locally, how to find them. Um, it explains like the environments you usually find them in as well as what parts of the state. There was one where it went over a lot more of those like rodent type animals, right? So the opossums, the, what was the thing? It had the craziest nose. I can't remember if that was based, but it just gives you like a look into the mice and things like that. Uh, there was another one on salamanders. I didn't even know we have salamanders in Ohio, to be honest. I've never seen one here. Apparently we have plenty of them and this book tells you how to find them. So keep an eye out for those pamphlets and booklets at your nature center. They will be a huge help for environmental learning. And now beyond that, and also there's a booklet on this, which is mushrooms and all the different um, fauna and flora of our area. But it's really cool because uh, we're looking at becoming foragers in a sense. We want to learn about foraging and where to find things and especially like mush hunting for mushrooms, things like that. So it's gonna be a big deal this year. And these booklets are basically the map to finding exactly what you need when it comes to exploring outside. Our kids are going to get a firsthand look at so many things that we didn't even know existed here because we had never bothered to look at those pamphlets and booklets. So this summer I think is going to be the best one yet. This is normal stuff that we do every year, but this year especially with really maximizing our resources and getting the most of it, there's going to be a ton of learning going on. If you're interested in seeing how other ladies are going to be using resources for spring learning, click this video on the top over here. If you're interested more in what kind of homeschooling we do, check out this video on the bottom, okay? And I'll see you over there. Have fun homeschooling.